Hello, my name is Carla Fernandes and welcome to Afro Beach Videocast, the place where we listen to black and racialized women from all over the world. We are based in Lisbon, but we seek to bridge our experiences and inspire one another to keep moving forward. My guest today is Jesuton. She was born and raised in London, England, but it was in Brazil that she saw her artistic career take off. But now it is the south of Portugal, Algarve, that has caught her heart and inspired her latest creations. Welcome to the show, Jesuton. Thank you. I'm really, really pleased to be here. Uh, I would like to start uh, with a question uh, which is very general, but uh, how do you describe yourself as an artist? Um, I would say I'm an artist that is concerned about the interconnections between us. Um, I think from an early age, I grew up in a, a very diverse neighborhood and um, I normalized you know, having conversations with people from all over the world with different religious backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds. And, and I always want, you know, it was always a great fascination of mine to kind of draw the lines that connect us and talk about the things that are kind of different as well. And, you know, what is, you know, our respective view, what are our respective views on certain things, what makes us happy, what makes us concerned, and what makes us unique and special. And I think um, in varying degrees throughout my work, I have tried to take that search, you know, internally, uh, as I did with my first uh, album of original music, Home. I was looking at the different versions of our own self that live within ourselves. And now I'm kind of taking that, that journey a little bit more external and trying to talk about you know, our collective joys and our collective um, identities. So I think, um, yeah, as, as an artist, just those, those links and connections and breaks and fractures and other things that, that concern me. And you started off, you started <laughs> off uh, or your career you know, took off in Brazil. Uh, Jim, how did it happen? Why did you choose to go and live in, in Brazil, for instance? Well, it was a, a very intuitive move. Um, I have been studying Latin America and um, politics, culture uh, for uh, some time. I have been working on a dissertation to do with uh, ayahuasca, which is plant medicine. Um, and um, I was also very, always very interested in Latin America, but I, I, I felt like with Brazil, there was a deeper calling, something that I'm kind of just piecing together now, actually, after you know, more than 10 years um, living and, and working in the country. And I do feel like it was, it was uh, a very specific movement um, to do with um, probably um, my ancestry and and the history, the shared history between Brazil and Africa. <coughs> and you were you were discovered, or your career took off because <coughs> of a video that of you playing on the streets. Uh, in Brazil, how was that experience? How did that, you know, change your course? Um, it definitely um, changed my course in, in, a, in a very, in a very definitive way. Um, I was trying to figure out a way to live, um, just just working on music, and um, being on the street was the way that I found. You know, I, I like. And it's very democratic and like that people stop when they're interested in, in the way it is that you have to offer. And I saw that as a as a, as another sign essentially. Um I was I was hoping to just have this connection with music. <coughs> but I uh, I managed to kind of bring in um, just have a, a, an experience where um, my work kind of took off and, and had a, a larger impact. So um, I went from 
has been, you know, just a kind of just just starting out essentially to um, to going on some of the biggest programs in, in Brazil. And and I think more important more importantly than that initial push is that um, I was able to build deeper connections within the Brazilian community as time went on. So I started to collaborate with other artists. Um, you know, all of the the, the albums that I created, all of the, the different relationships that I built um, started, um, you know, from that initial uh, great exposition of, of, of my work. So, yeah, it was it was it was definitely intense. I definitely tried to take everything in in my you know with it within my you know the the, the within the confines of my understanding at the time, and I had space for for that to grow as well over time. So it was it was definitely a shock to the system, but something that I tried to manage um, in a in a more practical way. I think as, as time went on. But I'm incredibly grateful for that beginning. And globally, um, how do you position yourself or how do you see yourself as a female artist um, with this background, with this sensibility, you know, also interest in the global, but also uh, realizing that our, there are specific connections like in Brazil with the ancestry probably you know, that you felt there. How do you see yourself um, in terms of consumption as well, how do people take your work in? And uh, uh, what kind of productions would you like to do better? Well, I think um, this high idea of how I see myself and how people see me um, is always like an eternal question, isn't it? You, know, you never really quite know how people are consuming your art. And also, I think that is something I do try to lead to whoever is interested in, in my work, you know, whatever connection that they have with my work is, is something that um that is is it, it, it's something that I leave for, for people to kind of take or and, and develop on their on their own. I mean the way I see myself, um I think that there is a lot to be said for, you know, a second generation uh, person who was born to uh, um, two different cultures and in a third country still so Nigeria, Jamaica and then grew up in London and and then decided to kind of relocate to a fourth location you know passing by a, a bunch of different places along the way I think there there are more connect there are more things in this world that that connect us and there are more things that that should inspire togetherness, um, though that isn't really what happened in you know to the main main part. I think that we have become we've allowed ourselves to become really fragmentalized as um, fragmented as a as a society, and so I think that it is. I think I would, I would like to be a symbol of of togetherness. So I would like to be a symbol of. Um, uh, crossing cultural, traditional cultural boundaries, and um, that is definitely a focus of my next work to show similarities. You know, I think with my last work, I was very interested in showing differences, and I think that that was a very important part of my own personal growth as an artist to show that a black woman can be different people and can have different ideas and different personalities and not everything has to fit in a particular um fit in a particular box but could now you share, think, could you share the name of your last work talk about yeah it. my album is called home so that that's what this album is, is kind of talking about like the multiplicity of our of our identities and being proud of that um but at this point in time, the, the way I, I would like to be, I guess I'd like to be seen and, and why I'm trying to do is kind of bringing um, ancestral rhythms together with what is happening in, in the music scene in, the, in Brazil these days and what's happening in the music scene in Nigeria, for example, and showing 
showing you know my you know, people who enjoy my music that they have a lot to do with one another and so I think that this moment is about showing similarity showing strength and building so yeah that's, that's, that's where I am at the minute and also you crossed another boundary like singing in Portuguese no? writing in Portuguese no? can you talk, uh, talk about this uh, this new theme that you wrote in Portuguese Yeah, I think it was just a, it was a, a, another moment of transition. I think it was very, uh, Brazil opened, uh, welcomed me with open arms um, from when I, when I moved there in 2012. However, I did not speak Portuguese at that time. I spoke Spanish very fluently, but I was always very anxious to be able to communicate in an effective way. So that, but that is a process, you know, it takes some time. So over the past, I guess, yeah, 10 years, I've just been working and speaking and improving. And um, and now I've got to the point where I felt very comfortable not only speaking in Portuguese, but writing in Portuguese and performing in Portuguese. So that's just, you know, a process. And I, and I didn't want to do it kind of any way. I really wanted to do it in a way that um, affirms my feeling of a very strong Brazilian identity within myself as a person and with myself as an artist. So I wanted to do it at a time where I had that proximity and that comfort and maybe that uh, right, I suppose, to be able to take it on as, as my own and, and something that feels very comfortable in my chest. So that is, it's been a very, a very beautiful experience. And I really enjoy writing in Portuguese. It's a very beautiful language, and you have a lot of there are a lot of different things that you can say uh, that are not so easy to say in English. And I'm sure the other way is true. But um, yeah, it it opened up a lot for me. And you are also inspired through what I read um, in your bio and the material that was sent to me. You were also inspired by Algarve. The landscape of uh, Algarve in Portugal. Uh, how did the, this uh, attraction came about? It was very, you know, it was very random. Um, I, I basically I was living in Lisbon and then essentially moved to the Algarve during, the, um, you know, the, the pandemic, and so that's where I was based for two years. And um, you know, the Algarve is a gorgeous part of Portugal. It's definitely more rural you know there are long walks to be had there's beautiful beaches there's great food it's usually seen as a bit more of a touristy location but because of the pandemic there really wasn't anybody there it wasn't packed as it usually is and so there was that space as opposed to just kind of take in the natural landscape and think about it and and have a bit of a relationship with it whereas usually i suppose There are just so many people bustling about that perhaps you might have that, that perspective. So it was, it was, yeah, it was definitely very unexpected, but it gave me the space to work on a lot of the, the poetry that I've been accumulating, you know, over years. And so, yeah, it was a very special uh, opportunity, I would say, you know, under the very bizarre circumstances, very heavy circumstances. But, um, you know, I'm really pleased with what I was able to do and make out that time. Yes, many artists and uh, people, of course, uh, from all walks of life have spoken about the role of the pandemic in their production, in their relations. And how was it for you, you know, also looking into this artistic part, but maybe if you want to share as well the personal part. Yeah, I think that it was just a very, uh, it, uh, it was, you know, a very clear moment where we were all forced to understand that we really are all interconnected. There's, you know, we are one world. Um, and as much as we do try to compartmentalize ourselves, um, when it comes right down to it, um, something that happens. You know, in a in a province of China, then will have can have repercussions around the world. So, I think that it was a moment of very deep reflection. I think 
school for a lot of people and I and I was definitely one of those people that, that felt very felt the emotions that were being felt in the world in a very strong way. I think there are some people that kind of managed to kind of breeze through situations and, and think about, you know, maybe think more locally, but I think um, just myself as a person and perhaps the reason why I'm an artist that that when things are happening on, a, on any kind of scale, it's something I do feel and something that will always have a, a, a big impact on me. So, you know, I kind of was just riding that that wave, you know, feeling very desperate, being very, you know, um, concerned about the state of the world and concerned about, you know, people who, who had a, a rough, a much more difficult time of, of that period. Um, I was very grateful that I was able to to have a safe space. I was very grateful for you know, being able to have enough to eat. You know, there are these very basic things that I that I was able to that that rang really true during that time. So, you know, the the fact that that I was able to turn some that experience into some kind of artistic output is just you know I think it, an expression of a certain privilege you know that I was able to have that space and, and that mental space to be able to and, and like the material basics to be able to produce things because you know it was difficult um, and for a lot of people it was even harder so yeah it's a it's a complicated it was a complicated time and I think it's still going to take a while before we really unpack everything that happened during that time on a personal level as well you know certain relationships of course intensified others became weaker and um yeah i think we're still understanding what what it was that happened yeah yeah and and well in your production of course many people started producing in a different way but also distributing in a different way in terms of um, practical terms, no, creating art, sharing art, and distributing art. Did that happen in your case? And because this is leading to where can we find you? How are you sharing your music? In which places could we eventually, you know, cross with your with your productions? Well, I think a lot of people started becoming very concerned about streaming and live streaming, and I definitely did. I did my research as far as, as far as I was concerned. I did a few live streams, and um, you know there was there's always this conversation, um, and I think about musicians and and how we actually manage to um, make any money, like make any kind of a living. And I think this was one of the big questions during the pandemic. You know, musicians were one of the first people, kind of almost expected to kind of uh churn out work and and be productive and do shows and make everybody like raise the mood um you know keep keep going and you know there there wasn't a lot of support for musicians and so i think um that is something that is is you know that that was a, a fragility that we were aware of but it was very much exposed during the the, the pandemic um a lot of people tried to start, you know, making different income streams, you know, with uh, subscriptions and, and merchandise. And, and for sure, there, there are these things that, that, you know, a lot of artists do attempt to do. But, you know, whether it's, it's however successful it is, is, is always very, very, very. So, um, so there, yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, there are different ways that I definitely try to, to make things move move forward. But. It got to the point where it's like, yeah, it, it, it didn't really change anything in, in a very, very specific way because I think those other, those other attempts, they're not always very, you know, a lot of people at that time as well were, were in difficulty, they were struggling. So, you know, everybody was, was going to focus on their, their immediate environment. So I would, I would say that it, it, it definitely brought the conversation to the table but it didn't really offer very many concrete solutions and so you know you'll see that I think a lot of these live streaming situations um, 
they're not really happening anymore. We're just kind of gone back to business as usual, shows as usual, um, which is another, you know, point of fragility for artists, you know, because if anything happens or they fall ill, they can't tour and, and we do that, 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 that main form of income is, is under threat again. So, so yeah, I think it was an opportunity for things to change and, you know, and become a bit more, more fair for artists you know, improve streaming incomes and things like that, but we really didn't get there, unfortunately. And where where, where can people find your work? Which shows are on your list, agenda? Uh, where can we find you then? On all of the streaming platforms, for sure. And you can um, listen to my work on Spotify, on Deezer, on Apple Music, on Tidal, wherever you prefer to, to get your music. And um, I'm mostly found on Instagram, um, but I can be found on YouTube as well, um, there's lots of videos and things like that. And um, we're hoping to see some shows here in Portugal in December and then in the new year to start um, shows for like uh, the tour. Yeah. So Thank you so much, Jezotan, for your time and talent and for sharing this with us. And thank you for being with us. Uh, I always like to rem remind you that you can follow us and subscribe to our channels. My name is Carlos Fernandes, and I'll see you next time.